Hey there YouTube, this is uh, Jesse with Promo Fit. Been a little while since I put a video out. I uh, got a couple things I want to show you, but my plans and projects got interrupted with a new project. So I have an older 70s series Kenmore, Sears Kenmore washer, and it had been making some periodic noise. Now when we bought this house, it came with a house. The uh, house had been sitting empty for about four years, washer and dryer included, so when I first got this washer, uh, it did not work all the way. I don't remember exactly what it didn't do. I don't think it's agitated or spun. I think all they did is fill water. So I, I tore the back off. This is about a year ago, uh, last October. And uh, um, the belt had kind of seized a little bit and had just been crusted from sitting in one spot. So I, I rocked the pulley just to kind of free it. And it's been working relatively okay uh, up until the past few weeks. So now it's been uh, it didn't drain and it didn't uh, didn't spin the spin cycle when I get to that and you could hear it trying but it wouldn't do anything so what I did is I flipped it on its front there's an access panel on the back this is an older model and I s took some silicone lubricant which let's see if I can find if I can find it I'll show you what I used oh here it is so Sprayway, um, I'm not endorsing them so much as I'm not getting paid, but uh, the glass cleaner by Sprayway and the silicone, um, you can also get it by Liquid Wrench, I believe makes the silicone spray. Amazing. Don't use WD-40 on stuff. That'll degrease it and then you'll have no lube for whatever you're using. If you're going to use WD-40, you have to clean it after the fact and you have to use some sort of grease or lubricant. This stuff is amazing. Anyways. I sprayed some of that on all the pulleys and everything and stuff and was able to free up the small pulley, which I'll show you here in a minute, that allowed the water pump to drain the, uh, the washer, because this is a belt drive, this isn't a direct drive. And anyways, I couldn't figure out what was causing it to not spin. So I went on YouTube, yay YouTube, and found somebody, and I want to say his username is... Mac artist or something like that and stuff. I'll put a link down in the description down below. And uh, he has a 1968 Kenmore washer, and he's had it for I don't know since his parents or grandparents had it. And it turns out that these things have a transmission, which over time the transmission fluid leaks, dries out, evaporates, whatever the case may be. And so I'm filling. I had to use a slightly different setup than he did, but I'm filling up the transmission fluid. So. To do this, I have some tubing here, which is, I believe this is uh, polyethylene. I don't remember the size. I think it's 3 8 Just buy something. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. This is just a fill tube. Uh, and it goes down to here, and I just have it wired up for ease. When it goes down here, I had to get a brass coupler and stuff because I was trying to piece it together because I didn't have any, I couldn't find any of this stuff. This is 8th inch ID, 3 16 OD, and the red stuff is the ATF fluid. Now, I'll get back here a little ways so you can kind of see the big picture. So, this big square thing on the left is the, the, the main drive motor, main drive motor. The thing on the right is your gearbox and slash transmission, and uh, you'll have to excuse me if I'm Kind of pausing and stuff. We just went on a uh, six-mile bike ride, and <clears throat> I'm sure my blood sugar is a little low. But anyways, so if you look closely down here, so we can get some extra light in here. Um, there's the belt for the belt drive. You can kind of see right here. There's the main pulley. Now, if you look closely, there's a little pulley in the background. You can kind of see it. Let's see if I can point it out. Okay, so the pulley back there was uh, kind of seized up. It wasn't spinning when I just moved when I moved the belt by hand. And when this pulley here seized up, the water stopped going. So when I sprayed some of that silicone lube just on the basic where the bearings meet, this thing would actually uh, free up. And it would when I'd run it, the spin cycle would do everything but spin. It would uh, all the parts would move and everything else and stuff. And uh, except it, the water would drain. So, 
after watching that guy's video, I want to do the same thing. This thing drains so incredibly slowly. I need to fill it up here in a minute. That's what the uh, where the fill tube goes. So that is a approximately a. Sorry about the shakiness here. That's approximately a three sixteenths OD tube going into the fill tube. It goes in about three quarters of the way down and stops. So I'll see if I can uh, show you. I'll fill it up. I don't have a funnel that fits in the top there. Otherwise, I'd put a funnel and pour it in and it'd make my life a little easier. But I'll uh, come back in a second and show you how slow it fills. All right. So without uh, without a funnel, you can see how slow this thing uh, this thing fills. It's actually moving. There's a little air bubble in here, which is slowly uh, trying to move up as the uh, fluid goes down. But it it goes through there and just goes really slow. Now I didn't use any Teflon or anything on that coupler, so it drips a little bit. I'm getting ATF fluid everywhere. So if you do this for your yourself, if you have an older washer like this, prepare to make a mess. The ATF fluid is thinner than oil, but uh, <clears throat> it's still fairly thick. It moves incredibly slow. There's that air bubble coming up. Um, this is a really slow process. The only way I can tell that it's going to fill up when it's actually full is uh, this uh, it's going to just basically back feed and just spill everywhere so I just got to keep an eye on it and make a, make a mess. Now when I was searching to find out what was going on with this video or with my wash machine I did lots of searches and there's lots of 80 series and there's lots of other versions but there's not very many videos on these older models so if you have an older model 70 series or older I think they use the same engine or motor belt drive transmission setup uh, up through at least the 70 series until they changed it I think the next model is the direct drive and the direct drive ones they say oh it's the most likely the coupling well this motor here sits uh, underneath the water, you flip it upside down, there's a water pump, you take some clips off, you take that off, there's a, there's a, this guy and then there's a coupling that attaches everything. And uh, so you can see this guy dripping over here. Um, so if you look underneath and it looks more like this, this is the key. Now I'll show you my, uh, before you start anything, make sure you disconnect the power and the water lines. You don't need to be making a bigger mess then. And what I did is, because the pump, this thing wouldn't drain at first, I had to unhook this, and I just happened to have a floor drain right there, and I would just tip it down and it would drain. And then I would have to wiggle the tube back and forth to get the low spots out, and it took a little while to drain the first time. So, here's the uh, model and serial number. See, there you go. It's a model 110. Um, this doesn't give you a ton of information, you know. And every time I kept on going on Sears website and cross-referencing, it didn't come up with anything because it's too old. But here's where I got the the more important, the more pertinent information. Kenmore 70 series, model series 2371. That none of that really helped me. What helped me was. The way the motor and transmission setup was. So I'll come back after I get this thing filled up and uh, show you that it works. All right, thanks. You can kind of see the level rise right there. So far I've put about a half a quart of ATF fluid in this thing. Okay, I'm back. It's been about an hour since I uh, got the uh, transmission filled. I went and plugged it in, 
hook the drain line up, hook the hot and cold water line up, switch it over to spin and rinse cycle. No luck. Did not work. Everything sounded better. The weird grinding noises kind of went away and stuff, but it did not spin. So, I'll show you where I'm at now. I got a mess. I got parts everywhere, um, but it works. So, what I did was, is I took, I popped the top off. There's a couple of clips. I'm going to show you as I do it, put it all back together. I'm going to show you so it'll be backwards. So, if that makes any sense. But anyways, this inside drum is the drum that spins. And this is kind of a bearing of some sort that, that uh, this guy here moves independently. What I did was I took some of that silicone spray. I sprayed all around here. Now, this bearing wasn't in bad shape. And I poured a little bit of ATF fluid right down around the edge in there. And then I took this guy, and it was really stiff. So I just physically moved it back and forth two or three times, kind of trying to force the parts to move. And I know that's not the best thing to do, but when you get some lube in there, sometimes the, the lube doesn't seep in very well. So you force the movement, and, the, and it'll coat the surfaces. So now you're not supposed to do this, but with it all apart, you go like this. Out. Voila! Now it doesn't sound the best because it's all apart right now and stuff. But so, don't do this at home. I'm going to unplug it and put it back together and show you what I did. Okay, so first step is um, the agitator, the center. Okay, this guy here. <coughs> Um, drops on. It, it's got, as you can kind of see, it's got um, male and female shank parts that match up. So drop that in here and kind of find the sweet spot. And let's see. I see it. And then just push it down. Then next, is this part here. Now this one it came apart kind of popped up. There's a bolt in the center here which holds everything together. And there's also this piece and there's also this piece. So I'm assuming this is a cam arm which makes it so when it goes back and forth it goes click click and only goes one direction. So we're going to drop that guy in there. I have no idea how it works other than I think it goes the other way. See the direction, that, uh, the light's going to be really bright here, but see the direction of the teeth and the direction of that? I'm pretty sure it goes the other direction. Let's see. So, this catches. On the outside here, or if it's on the inside, looks like it catches there as well. So I'm hoping I did this right. Hey, I'm back. So I just moved the washing machine back to run it, and I found that there was two of these guys. Probably makes a lot of sense. So I have to pop this off here, take this guy out, and put this guy back in. So I'll be back in a second. Um, and this guy here, use a tab here, a tab here, they line up with this tab and that tab, so slides down, this does not drop down all the way, so this thing must need to be in a different position. Alright, so just spinning that, dropped it down, clicks in place, this guy here, now I did not use a socket, which I probably should have, I just used a 
wrench because I've been at this since yesterday. Let's see. Not promoting Irwin's, but these wrenches are awesome. a slow way to tighten it but yeah I'll come back in, in a second okay so I got that back on tight and this thing spins independently but when you spin it fast it throws that pink catch out which catches those teeth causes the whole thing to spin when it slows down it'll agitate just fine so all right, so that's back together. So the next step is this cap here, which just pops off. Next is this guy here. Now, that is dirty. I'll clean it later. This guy here pops on the top here. And this guy here sits on this. This is like a super slick glide. This slides underneath it, like so. So the key is getting it all together. What I had to do here is, this is a pin. I had to turn it sideways to get that part under there. And when I took it off, I had to come underneath too like this because it wouldn't go the other way so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go like this and this has a uh, notch here which fits there perfectly in theory there you go. So I'll shove this up here fits one-handedly put that there Let's see. There we go. it's not quite up all the way there we go a little bit of effort required not much and then the main thing is getting this thing straight so standing here, that's pretty close. This guy here, it's got these edges, like that, and that clips in place there. This guy slides here, may need to adjust it just a little bit. And then there's clips that hold this in place. All right, so I've got these like hook clips, and basically there's a metal lip under here which I can feel that you can't see. You take the small end, and you're like, oh, that doesn't fit. So you take the big end, push it over as high as you can. You may need to use some pliers. Look, being visited by the chip monster. Ooh, snack. Thank you. I mixed the cheesy cheese with the homemade salsa. Ooh, cheesy cheese and homemade salsa. Thank you. Okay. So, you get this guy on here. Push this down. There's the lip. You need to get this down here, push it in there. So it goes. There. All right, I lied. I had them backwards. I said put them on like this. They don't fit that way. 
they go on like this and they go on really easy. So I got one here. Slide it down a little bit. There was one back here. Watch this. Clip underneath. Hooks on. No tools necessary. And it doesn't pull up. And then I think there's one over here. I'm going to move this one down a little bit farther since I only have three. There might have been four on here originally, but I can only find three, so just one handed. Oh, except I missed it that time. Bam! Make sure. Let's see. Alright, so now that that's on, this guy here, there's a couple of spring clips right there and right there. Just, that's it. Oh, yeah, hee hee. Plug it in. required. So this guy sits here, that guy sits there. That guy sits there. I'm sure they push off each other. thing has uh, a lot to do with it. There we go. And to tighten this guy up, I keep cutting away because I only got one hand, but I just hold the bottom fin and then use the wrench. If you think it's going to strip, don't do it. Go get a box wrench or something. Let's see. All right, thanks, guys. Yeah, we have a successful washer. Thanks for uh, sticking with me guys, it's uh, taken a little while, I have another video I put together a little while ago about my fiance's uh, uh, blinkers and, and headlight assembly not working, I refurbished it and screwed it up a little bit, I'll probably post that in the next week or so, i got some editing to do. Thanks guys, don't forget to like, subscribe and uh, get hypnotized by the washing machine.